Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am working in these nursery bins. Um, I made a sort of vital mistake by adding all these leaves to the top, so I'm going to try and remove them now. I, um, when I am done, that's when I feel like I'm going to want to add those leaves. So I'm taking them back. I noticed there was a lot of moisture. I put um, some garbage bags over the top because I was afraid. I didn't want them to dry out too much. So I'm just going to take most of these leaves back. I have already split two of the breeder bins and then moved them into these big tanks. These are my nursery tanks or what I'm calling my grow out bins. I'm sure I'm not using really good technical terminology here for this worm a culture, but it's the best I got. <laughs> Oh, I'm moving at this rate so fast um, for this microbial farming because it's almost as if you only have so much time to get stuff done. And I didn't realize that, but, you know, you're going to get the crop in and there's really not much you can do. Okay, so here's what I've done. I'll see what you guys think. These are the nursery bins. Okay, bottom layer. Remember, we've got the wand in there because I was scared of possibly going anaerobic. So anytime I can go ahead and hook up to the air compressor tank, charge the bottom at least with oxygen. I don't know. Um, surely that would percolate up. I'm going to maybe punch some chimneys in, like the Elaine Ingham methods for cooling piles down. But um, Johnson Sue says, that the oxygen will penetrate six inches. Um, so I have to have holes every six inches so that it can disperse everywhere. Um, now, granted that these worms, after they've been in here a while, they're surely going to have tunnels that are going to allow oxygen to go in and out. And that's why I wanted those euros in here. So I should really just be putting euros in, but I don't have enough... Um, room for all this bedding at two tanks so i'm not sure i need to measure this i put uh the chips on top of the wand to absorb any type of moisture so that i don't have any standing water down in the bottom no way at all possible um it's oxygenated down there and then i put wool and then on top of that no i think i put a burlap bag on top of that and then i put a fleece so the wool was there, the aphrodisiac bedding for more um, production in these tanks, even though they're just for backup nurseries and raising them. I guess these are growers, not really nurseries. If I had an actual true nursery, I would think that would be where they are on um, heat mats, the cocoons. So I'd be separating out the cocoons and then putting them on heat mats. That would be a nursery. So the little guys get to growing. I don't have that. I'm moving them to just growers and they gotta do what they gotta do there. Um, I may find that I can raise those worms inside. They'll be laying just fine. The worms can handle those temperatures and then I need to put the cocoons on these towers. And then that way, um, those will be my nurseries. And then from the nurseries, then they'll move to the growers. So there shouldn't be any cocoons in here except for if the adults start mating again okay so that's what I have and then um over in this bin you'll see that I do have oh can you see it no I don't think you're gonna be able to see it there's just no visual on it this this coiled that's the air um hose that I can charge this tank up with oxygen if it needs it down low. Once we add more and more, okay, see those big arrows on top? Okay, those are the ones that I wanted in these grower bins because they are the ones who are gonna go the tunneling the deepest and make the soil more aerobic the deeper they go. That's kind of why I like this diversity of species. So when we get into the deeper tanks, 
your euro should want to go right down back down their hole and hang out in the bottom your red wigglers will stay medium moving that soil around keeping it aerobic and then all the indian blues like to come to the top okay so that's what i have so so far uh there's three grower bins nursery whatever breeder bins in here now i think i'm gonna have to go fuller on this um now tomorrow i'll be in the euro tower oh there's nine tanks there nine tanks of bedding i'm gonna have to do something with so i'm in trouble we're going today to pick up some wooden <laughs> boxes to put uh some heavy thick plastic in and we'll be moving more bins there because these are going to get huge i don't know what's going to happen um once this gets this deep i'm going to have to punch those channels so i can keep this oxygenated i've got this so i can charge it with oxygen <laughs> oh yeah i just i'm going overboard because i'm afraid that uh i don't want to lose my uh all my um bedding my organic matter I don't want to get it broken down under anaerobic conditions because of um, losing, I don't want to form a lot of nitrates and things or losing it in the gaseous form. So I'm going to lean on the Johnson Sioux and just punch those holes every six inches to make sure our oxygen can penetrate. I think that those worms are going to end up filling those holes back in slowly over time, but that's okay. I can just go in easily. And put more of them in and I was debating on just using that method and not putting in the wands to aerate the bottom but we thought it's gonna be simple enough to make the wands we went ahead and made the wands each one of these has a wand in it so that's where we're at so this tank is now gonna get one of the um, buddings from the euros and some actual euro worms in there so they can make the tunnels and I wish I had an oxygen sensor that I could tell you these tanks are staying aerobic. The only thing that I have that we are going to do is take soil samples and look for the anaerobic bacteria. And if I see them, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're going to have to do something different. And this is all the process of learning how to do this microbial farming the correct way so that you don't... Uh, say it doesn't work because you're not getting the results that you could be getting if you were farming aerobically. Okay, that's the ticket. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my new nursery slash grower bins. I hope they work out great. Let me know in the comments what you think that I might have done wrong, that I might want to change. I welcome criticism because that's how I get better and better at what I do. Um, and uh, yes, I understand everybody's methods are different, but I'm just like to take in all that knowledge so that I can um, assimilate, um, assess, and then change whatever needs changed in order to make it work better for me. Thank you, you guys, so much for hanging out and sticking this, sticking it out with me uh, through this crazy journey. If microbial farming, it seems to be like what they're going to be calling the sophisticated farming of the future. And it is um, very futuristic. So we're going to just play around here on the mothership. See if we can get this sucker sailing. <laughs> Stay tuned.